because Christmas is about Jesus and the radical left would rather worship government instead of God. So excuse me while I go carol, baby it's cold outside without regret. For my final point tonight, I read a poll this week by Pew Research that said Americans are losing their religion, that more Americans than ever before, particularly in my age bracket, don't attend church, don't pray, and don't even believe in God. The poll said that only half of millennials are certain about their belief in God. I was raised Catholic and am a practicing Catholic to this day. My faith is an enormous part of who I am. It's part of my identity. It shapes the choices I make, who I choose to be in this world, what my words and actions are towards my family, towards my friends, towards my boyfriend, and towards strangers. I am who I am because I am a daughter of Christ. It's not always easy in this day and age to admit that your faith, your belief in God, is the driving force behind everything you do and everything you are. It's not respected in our culture. Religion is many times even painted to be oppressive instead of liberating. But for me, that's never been the case. My relationship with God, my personal relationship with God, it hasn't always come easily. When difficult things happen, and they do, it's hard for me not to lose faith that God has a plan for my life. But that belief, that's always what keeps me anchored. It's what makes me able to be joyful every day, no matter what is happening. That belief that God's plan for me is part of his plan for the world is what drives me to make the most of every moment I've gi I'm given, even if I wish that moment wasn't happening in the first place. I know that God loves me. He wouldn't have put me on this earth, this beautiful, wonderful, difficult, challenging, changing earth, if he didn't love me. And he wouldn't have sent his son to die a violent death for me if his love wasn't deep and complete. God knows people aren't perfect. He made us that way. He made us flawed and full of sin so that we would have the free will to choose to love him as he loves us. The guidance God gives us, it's not oppressive. Nobody's forcing me to follow the Ten Commandments if I don't want to, or to serve and love God against my will. I choose to do so because I know God gave us a handbook for life. He knows what it takes to be the men and women he created us to be. He told us directly in the Bible. I'm proud to be a Christian. And while I don't knock on doors and ask people if they want to talk about Jesus, I think the other half of my generation, the millennials who, in growing numbers according to this poll, are choosing not to believe in God, not to pray, not to go to church, they're missing out on something wonderful. They're missing out on who God has planned for them to be. Unique, irreplaceable, strong, joyful men and women with a purpose in this life only they can fulfill for the glory of God's kingdom. And that is my final point. On October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther nailed his 95 Thesis to the door of All Saints Church in Wittenberg, Saxony. This began the Protestant Reformation, a protest against the corruption of Roman Catholicism in order to reform the church toward a more biblical and gospel-centered foundation. Still today, the doctrines of Roman Catholicism are far from sound. Despite what a Catholic might tell you, the church actually does exalt the Virgin Mary as an object of worship and teaches that she brings us the gifts of eternal salvation as an intermediary between us and Christ. However, 1 Timothy 2.5 says there is one mediator between God and men, and that is Christ only. Nowhere in the Bible does it say anything about praying to Mary or any dead saint. In fact, Deuteronomy 18.11 says that communicating with the dead is detestable to the Lord. The Bible says that it is by grace you have been saved through faith, not of works. The Catholic Church, however, says that if a person claims that salvation is by grace through faith alone, they should be excommunicated. Catholicism also teaches that a person can lose their salvation and must do acts of penance in order to get it back. But Romans 4, 5 says a person cannot be justified in such ways. The Catholic Church forbids their priests from marrying, but 1 Timothy 4, 3 calls this the teaching of demons. It is possible for a person to be Catholic and also a born-again Christian, but if they truly read the doctrines of the Catholic Church and compare them with the Bible, a maturing Christian should not remain Catholic when we understand the text.